Out of your bed, out of your, out of your shampoo, out of your, out of your rivers of living water, out of your, out of your, out of your living water. Welcome to the Men of Integrity, men that rescue men and women. As always, we're delighted that you've joined us for a journey through the Word of God. Can I remind you again of Matthew 4 and 4, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You know, the record says that the Word of God is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. It is the Word of God that keeps us going day in and day out. We are reaching the end of another year. We've just come out of a season of Thanksgiving, and now we're going into a season of demonstration of love. God has been so great, so marvelous, so wonderful, and I believe that you can testify with me how good and how great God has really been. But it has not been without controversy. It has not been without trial, it have not been without error. And tonight I want to encourage you that though many are the affliction of the righteous, the Lord shall continue to deliver us out of them all. I want to invite you to the Rivers of Living Waters ministry where every service is a life-changing experience. We're not just a church, we're an experience. So come and join us at any of our services You'll be so glad that you did. The record tonight is found in Mark 9 and 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. The thought that I want you to wrap around your mind tonight is this. The power to win is faith. The enemy fights us. He's fighting our mind to believe the Word of God. There's so many ideologies and theories that are popping up concerning this, that, and the other. But the Word of God is the final authority on truth. And the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Out of all of the obstacles that we face, out of all of the tribulation and the trials, we must maintain our integrity of faith, our faith concerning God, our faith concerning us, and our faith concerning who the devil really is and what his objective really is concerning the saints. So let me read that record again for you in Mark 9 and 23. Jesus says unto him, if thou can believe. That says a whole lot right there. My question to you, what have you done to develop the faith that God has given to you? Are you able to maintain what you believe when things appear to be so much different? He says, all things are possible to him that believe. So when it looks dire, when it looks like it cannot be done, it can be done to those that believe. What is it that I must believe? I must believe that there is a promise on my life. There is a promise of eternal life. There is, a turn, or there is a promise that God says, I will give you life, and I give you life more abundantly. There is a power available to acquire that promise. And you find that in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. You're familiar with that. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. What he's saying to us in 2023 is that when I give you this power, when I give you this anointing that destroys yokes, everywhere you go, people are going to know that I am alive and that I'm able to do exactly what I said I could do. And then there is the promise to have prosperity in every area of your life. 
God wants to be glorified. He wants to be magnified. He wants to be made known that he is the one and only true and living God. Therefore, he prevails in our life in such a powerful way when we are experiencing trials and tribulation. How do I get God to move? How do I get God to do these things? If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. It's called genuine biblical faith. Genuine biblical faith is needed to experience the miraculous power of God. Faith in God is something that we do not possess naturally. In Ephesians 2 and 8, it tells us that faith is a gift of God. In Romans 12 and 3, God enables us to believe in him for salvation. Then he gives every believer a measure of faith. That is, God empowers his children to believe, to serve him, to glorify him through the power of faith which has been given unto us. It is possible that people take faith for granted. What do I mean by that? They assume that they have it, but they find themselves never able to be consistent in the things of God. When you believe God, you can stay consistent, you can stay focused in the things that God has spoken concerning the Word of God. Here is the commandment to the New Testament believer in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. He didn't say try to be. He says, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He says, don't be shaken in what you believe. Do not be shaken in what you have been taught. Do not change with every wind of doctrine. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What is that? The faith and the truth concerning God. We do not have to leave the things of God to chase blessings. You, you don't have to, amen, put down, glory to God, the standards and the righteousness and the teaching of God. But Matthew 6 and 38 continues to tell us that if we seek first the kingdom of God, and it's righteousness, then all these other things shall be added unto us. Here is the record to the believer in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 and 2. Listen what the record says to you and I. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Yes, you have to take a moment to know God's voice. My sheep know my voice, and to another they will not answer. He says, if you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all of his commandments, which I command thee this day. Yes, when you know the voice of God, you now become a student of God's word. You begin to observe, amen, and do the things that the word of God tells us that we must do. He says, you must do that which I command thee this day. Then every day during your prayer time in the morning, God has given you instructions as you study the word of God of how to go about your day, how to touch not, how to taste not, how to handle not, how to disengage and how to engage in the things of God. He says that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. He will set you above situations and circumstances. He will give you the power to be able to see in the spiritual realm the things which pertains to God. Now look what verse number two says, and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Isn't it a wonderful blessing to not have to pray for all of these things, but just to know that if I walk in the obedience of God, and the only way I could do that is I have to be completely glory to God, in vowed glory to God, dug in, invested into the word of God. When one has faith, 
we don't have to slow down, back up, stop because of situations and circumstances. We are led by God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. Who's leading you? Who's guiding you? I hope tonight that you're not still being led and guided by thoughts, feelings, and emotions. I hope you're not, glory to God, living by trial and error, but you're living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, that you've allowed yourself to be still for a season and to know that he is God. You've allowed yourself, glory to God, to be taught the word of God, and you have embraced that word of God as truth. A biblical definition of faith reaches beyond mere belief, the simple acknowledgement that God exists into a realm of trust. Genuine faith involves abandoning all human reliance and self-effort and placing total dependence upon God's character, his actions, his promises, and his revealed word. God says, if you believe on me, as the scripture have said, you have to believe in him, believe on him as it is written in the word of God. When you believe on him in that capacity, he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters, meaning that you will be refreshed, you will be restored, you will be revived. And in times like these, that's exactly what we need to be able to endure the test of times. Satan is fighting our mind. He wants us to no longer believe that God is real. He wants us to no longer believe that God loves us. He wants us to no longer believe that there is hope in this dire situation. When you look around, when you watch television, when you read the newspaper, when you scan through social media, all you see is death and destruction. All you see is chaos and confusion. But yet in the midst of chaos and confusion, the record says in John 10 and 10, the thief came, but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You don't have to watch the news or read the newspaper to know that God is still doing what he does as God. Look at your life. In the midst of all of this chaos and confusion, he has kept you. Glory to God. He has provided for you. He has made a way for you. Isn't that good news tonight? The Bible plainly teaches that faith is not just a mental attitude, but it is a way of life. This is what we do. We live by faith. We walk by faith. Glory to God. We abide in faith. In 1 John 5 and 4, the record says to the believer, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Now that's the born again experience. Remember when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, except the man be born again of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see or enter into the kingdom of God. This is what he talks about when he said, whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. He overcomes that worldly thinking. He gets rid of that worldly attitude. And he looks unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Look what he says, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. When we walk in faith and live by faith, we do not measure success or victory based on what we see or what we feel. Our victory is based upon the promise that God has made us, that he would never leave us, he would never forsake us, and he would never fail us. He is our deliverer our provider, our healer, our way maker. But except a man believe, he cannot experience the impossibilities, glory to God, of this life. Faith in God is a life-saving power. It's not a feeling. 
It is a belief in the power of God to save us to the utmost. When we lay hold of faith, we experience a tremendous power. It has to change our life completely. God says, I want to change you. You came to me weary, wounded, and sad, and now you found in me a resting place. And now I'm going to change the mentality, the thought process, and I'm going to cause you to believe by the spirit of truth. And when you believe, when you know beyond any reasonable doubt, this is what you're going to experience. We're going to become confident, strong, and brave. We no longer need to worry about the future. We can cast all of our cares on him and focus our energy on doing his will instead of worrying about everything past, present, and future. The first thing that I want you to wrap your mind around tonight is this, that faith gives freedom. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, here is what he says to the believer. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. I know you told other people about it. I know you talked about it. But did you tell God about it? Did you get in prayer? And did you tell him how you were feeling? Did you tell him the experience that you were having mentally, physically, glory to God, and psychologically? You have to tell Jesus about it. Listen what he says. When you let everything be made known to God through supplication and prayer with thanksgiving, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. You, glory to God, can be able to look around and you can begin to tell the people that God is going to work this out. He wants to work it out. Glory to God. He wants you to put it in his hands. He wants you to release it to him because God has a plan. Jeremiah 29 11, you hear it all the time. I know the thoughts I have towards you, thoughts of good, not of evil, to bring unto you an expected end. The expected end is not what you expect, but it's what God has already decreed and declared concerning your life and my life. You can quote my favorite scripture, Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That's faith, my beloved. When you have tried everything else, now it's time to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, the miracle worker, the light in the darkness, glory to God. It's now time to tell Jesus, I have tried everything. And now I'm looking unto you. And the record says, if thou can believe that all things are possible to him that believe. Believe it or not, so many people confess faith. But when it comes down to the impossible, we begin to get weary. When it comes down to the hour where we have no control over the situation, we get weary. But this is the time to step up and say, I believe, and Lord, help my unbelief. The power is to believe God. The record says in Romans 4 and 21, this is what he says to the believer. He is the testimony and the example of Abraham and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. All you have to do is look back over your life and you can become fully persuaded that God is able, that God can, and that God does. And he does love you for he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him will not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You are still in this race because he loves you. You're still in this fight because he cares. 
and he has been watching over you. I know sometimes it gets rough. I know sometimes it gets tough. But guess what? It would be even worse if the hand of God was not upon your life. Can I read the testimony again in Romans 4 and 21? And being fully persuaded, I'm persuaded by the experience of my own life. I'm persuaded that I can look at what I've been through and look at the word of God and know that God is true to his word. He keeps his covenant, his promises to a thousand generations. What he has promised, he is also able to perform. Now, here is something you got to stop and ask yourself. Is it God's promise or is it your plan? Because if you get into your plan and not the promises of God, you can find yourself out there all by yourself. That's why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. That's Proverbs 3. Glory to God. You have to understand that the only victory is when you follow God's promise, God's plan, and it's in the word of God. Listen, there is a promise, there is power, and there is prosperity. In Matthew 19 and 26, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. Is it that you've been going to mankind for so long, trying to find solutions and resolve for your issues and your problems? Have you been going to mankind for so long and yet coming up short? But he says with men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So not only does faith give you freedom, but faith gives you favor. Favor is grace. God's unmerited favor to undeserving man. Can I remind you that the record says to the believer in 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye have an all sufficiency and all things may abound unto every good work. The resources are in God. The resolve is in God. I know you've been looking for help through mankind, but man will only help you when God moves on the heart of man. It's God's grace. It's God's mercy. Glory to God. It's God's love and God's kindness that he causes man, glory to God, to be an instrument that he uses to bless in you. Glory to God. Listen, in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. The word grace appears 159 verses in the Bible. This describes God's whole activity towards man. None of us are deserving. We will never be deserving. But it's God's grace and it's God's mercy and it's God's love that causes us to overcome. But that requires something. It requires faith because faith is the power to win. Are you listening? Not only does faith give freedom and faith gives favor, but faith will make you famous. Why do you say faith makes me famous? Because Jesus took notice of faith. Satan took notice of faith. Satan does not want to deal with anybody that's a believer, that's a true believer, because he knows that you can outweigh him. He knows that you will praise your way through. He knows that you will worship your way through. And he knows that he has no power over the believer. This is why Jude says, contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. The saints is the proof and the evidence that faith in God is so powerful. If you ever go and read Hebrews chapter 11, it's the hall of fame for those that really had faith in God. In Matthew 8 and 10, 
When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, not even in Israel. He takes notice of the believer. In Luke 17 and 19, and he said unto him, Arise and go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. He said in so many words, your miracle has already happened because you believe. You do not have to go through rituals. Your faith has fixed it all. So often people want you to go through their personal rituals, jump up and turn around three times and shout hallelujah, run to the back door and touch it and shout hallelujah. No, my beloved, all you need to do is believe God because faith releases the word of God and the word of God, glory to God, is what brings you the miracle. The Bible says that he watches over his word to perform it. You activate God's word by belief by trusting him when the situation looks dire, when it looks like there is no other way out and there really is no other way out, but you now begin to look unto Jesus and that's when he gets the glory. You remember the Hebrew boys? It was their faith that brought God into the fire. Daniel and the lion den. It was Daniel's faith that brought God's power into the lion's den. In 2 Timothy 2 and 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth those that are his, because they walk by faith. Are you listening? And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Iniquity is that self-originated doubt. It's that thing that you looked at and you said, this is impossible. You looked at your situation and you say, there's no way this can be any better than it is. Yes, it can. Because all things are possible to him that believe. With man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. My beloved, the power to win is faith. In Mark 9 and 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Your faithful actions can change your life forever, but you have to believe the word of God. Job 22 and 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon it. So stop crying, stand up, look the situation in the face and decree the outcome. Because if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. I want you to join me Sunday morning, 1030 a.m. at the Rivers of Living Waters Sanctuary. There's going to be a word that's going to continue to encourage you and change your life forever. You can be healed, delivered, and set free. We are the men of integrity, and we are praying for your miracle. How do you bear? Out of your, out of your.